Hey guys, what's up? Serena here from thriftdiving.com and today we are actually going to do something fun. Grab your paint, grab your wood furniture because we are painting this china cabinet. I found it for $25 at the thrift store and it was originally $135. And we're not going to strip this, we are actually going to paint this. So I'm sorry wood lovers, but today we're painting wood. So don't freak out. And I'm going to walk you through step by step how to do this. So if you are a beginner and you want to learn how to paint furniture, this is the video that you should watch. And also today's video is being sponsored by Ariat. Guys, these are like the most comfortable clothing that I've worn in a long time. So today you're gonna to get to hear about them. They're a new sponsor of Thrift Diving, the official clothing sponsor. So I'll tell you a little bit more about them and why I think you're gonna love them too. But anyway, let's clean this thing up and let's get started with painting this. A lot of what I do here at Thrift Diving is physically demanding. I'm lifting things, I'm squatting, I'm moving things, and I need my clothing to be durable, I need it to be flexible, and I need it to cover me up. So back in 1993, Ariat had changed the equestrian game. That's right, this company had been known for riding boots and clothing and gear for people who were riding horses. Well, 40 years after that, they decided people like you, people like me, needed that same durability and flexibility in their clothing. So they introduced a line of clothing called rebar, and that's right, women, we now have work gear as well. And they just introduced their women's rebar workwear. So now we've got the same strength, durability, and features as the men's rebar, but it's tailored for women. So if you've got clothing that you want to be comfortable but still give you that range of motion when you're doing DIY projects or maybe you're in the trades, there is a line of clothing for us that will give us that movement and that comfort that we're looking for. Okay, the first step to painting furniture is that you always want to clean the furniture off first. You do need a clean surface, so if you're painting over top of dust and dirt, guess what? Your paint is not going to stick. So the first thing we're going to do is use a little bit of simple green. You can also use vinegar and water and just spray it down. You can dilute it with a little bit of water, spray it down, wipe it, and then come back with a clean towel and wipe off any remaining residue of the simple green. So make sure that you remove any stickers that come on your furniture piece. Also too, when you've got stickers on glass, it's super helpful to have one of these scrapers because it'll come right off. Also when you're cleaning, you definitely want to remove all the drawers and clean the drawers and also clean behind the drawers. Check for any bugs or anything like that. I mean, that would be horrific to actually see something back there. <laughs> Here's one thing too that comes up. A lot of times people say, well, my, my furniture stinks, it has an odor to it. How do I get rid of the odor? Well, I'm using Simple Green, which is not gonna be an odor reducer, I guess is that the word? <laughs> but if you use a product called Odoban, it can actually take the smell out. And by spraying it in there, leaving it in, in the sun, it helps to get rid of that old musty mildew smell. This one doesn't really smell too bad, so I'm not gonna do anything special because there is nothing worse than buying old furniture from the thrift store and it smells horrific. So once you've cleaned the furniture and you've inspected it to make sure there's no bugs or any surprises somewhere, now it's time to figure out what needs to be done to this furniture before I can move on. Now, the question that some people have is, can you paint furniture with no sanding or priming? And I always tell people that depends. Now, some people will tell you, no, you always have to prime, you always have to sand. I don't necessarily believe that. I think it depends on the piece that you're working on. However, if you are noticing that there's some surface imperfections, if you're noticing that there's some gouges, like down here, I've got some chipping, I may need to fill that in with wood filler or sand before I can move on to painting. So let me show you some of the things that I noticed on the china cabinet and what needs to happen first before I paint. So sometimes when you're dealing with large pieces of furniture, you can't really see what the top looks like. So you need to safely get up here, observe whether or not you're gonna need to sand this or if you can just paint it right out of the can. And in this case, you can see that there is definitely some pock marks on the top of this china cabinet. So painting over this is not gonna look good. So we're gonna go ahead and actually use the orbital sander on this top to remove the finish and then we can paint over it once it's all clean and once it's all smooth. So yes, sometimes you do have to sand. So look at this china cabinet and tell me what this looks like. They look like toilet seats, right? <laughs> it's so crazy. Somehow somebody thought that was an attractive detail to add to this piece of furniture. So for step three, we're gonna look at our piece of furniture and we'll say, what is it that we need to remove and what is it do we need to replace or 
add to the piece of furniture. So in this case, there's nothing that I need to add to this piece, but there are things that I need to remove, starting with those like toilet covers, um, or toilet seats. But also we're gonna remove this glass too. And so if you look here on the inside, there's just a couple pieces of trim that's holding it in place. We'll take that out, set the glass aside, and just make sure that we don't break that. Cool, I got all the trim out. And let's see if I can get this out. Please, Serena, don't drop this. <gasps> success, success. Next, we're gonna try to tap this off. Now, we might wanna save these because we probably could do something with these on another project. So we don't wanna just rip them off completely because this could be something cool for another project. I don't think we could ever save this. Actually, no, maybe we could. It looks less like a toilet seat when that little, <laughs> that little thing is not on top of it. Let's pull that off. All right, maybe we can do something with that. Now this looks like it's pretty good wood, but one of the reasons why I would not strip and stain this is because parts that are not flat. And when you are dealing with curved parts of a project, it's very difficult to, it's not impossible, but it's very difficult, much more time consuming to strip things that are curved. So now that we've removed these little toilet seat areas, <laughs> I would tell you this is an area that you definitely would want to sand. The reason why is because you can feel the edges here between where there was no stain and where there was stain. And so if you just try to paint over this, what's gonna happen is that you will still see the outline of these toilet seats. And that's not what you want. You want this to look nice and smooth. Use the orbital sander to smooth this out. Now you don't have to take it all the way down to the bare wood, but when you rub your hand over it, it should feel smooth. So let's talk about sanders. Now generally when people ask me what sander they should use to refinish furniture, I always recommend the Orbital Sander. This is one that doesn't cost very much. I think you can buy it for maybe 70 to $100. Creates an orbital pattern like this. We could use chemical remover to strip it or we can use a sander, which is what we're gonna do today. Now generally you wanna go rough around maybe let's say 80 which is gonna be the, the one that removes a lot of this finish. And then typically you're supposed to move down to a 150, which is like a, mi a medium grit sandpaper. And that's gonna to help to smooth out all of the rough edges or all the rough, you know, swirl marks. And then you'll move down to a 220, which will smooth everything out. Now, generally we would do that, especially if we're refinishing this, but since we're just painting, we wanna get all of this off and then we're just gonna skip to a 220 to help smooth it out. Another thing to keep in mind too when you're sanding, don't push down on the sander. It, it seems like you wanna push down on it to get more of it off quicker, but all that does is create the little swirly marks. So make sure that you let the, the tool do the job and you're just guiding it very slowly. So you can see now the top is pretty smooth, very dusty, so we're gonna wipe this down, make sure that there's no dust here so now we need to use some of this wood filler and we're just gonna spread some on here, let it dry, and then sand it out smooth. And I also added a little bit down here. We'll come over here and do this side as well. And I almost forgot there is an area down here that needs to be sanded smooth. If you'll notice, it's got some grittiness here where you see some of the finish is starting to come, come off. And again, if we paint over that, it's not gonna look good. So we're gonna take our sandpaper here, we're just gonna use the rough sandpaper, 60 grit or 80 grit, and just smooth that out a little bit. So for the next step, step five, I always like to do a test board to know exactly what colors I'm choosing, how they work together, do I like it, do I not like it? So what I decided that I was gonna do is this beautiful homestead blue. I love it, it has sort of like a greenish blue to it, not too dark, not too light. And I actually think with a little bit of this gray on the inside, this piece could be really, really stunning. So what I like to do now is to just pour as much paint as I think I'm gonna need without it drying out into a container, a clean container. I just like to reuse containers from around the house. Before you put the paint away, just try to wipe it down with a clean cloth. Wipe the lid down a little bit without making too much of a mess. So we're just gonna use some fine sandpaper and clear this. Oh no! Oh shoot. I guess I was sanding a little too aggressively. Let's fix this. All right, let's see if we can get this nice and smooth. 
so while we're waiting on the wood filler, we can go ahead and get started painting here. Now, this, this is not really a dark color, but it's a little bit darker, so I don't think we'll have any problem. Oh my gosh, look at that color. It's so pretty. Oh, I don't think we'll have any problem with bleed through, but if we did, this solution to that would be to use a oil-based primer. And you can see my video up there or up there or down below in the description on what to do if you start painting and you see that the wood, um, the old wood stain is starting to come through. But oh my gosh, this color is so freaking gorgeous. <gasps> okay, so let's stop and talk a little bit about priming. So one thing you'll notice here is that I'm not priming, and you have to excuse my neighbors over there blowing leaves today. Um, one thing you have to understand is that if this piece of furniture is not going to get a lot of heavy use, like you're not doing a tabletop, you're not doing uh, chairs or things where people are going to be sitting and rubbing their arms or putting drinks down, I personally don't think you have to prime. And a lot of people um, and a lot of companies, a lot of paint companies will tell you, hey, you can just open it right up out of the jar and start painting, which is what I'm doing. Now, some people will say, yes, you definitely should prime and, and, and sand and all that, but you don't have to. Um, again, if, you, ooh, man, this color is gorgeous. But again, if you, and I'm getting so excited looking at it. <laughs> it's so pretty, oh my God. I wanna paint everything in my house this color. Um, but if your piece is smooth, like this side is smooth, we didn't have any uh, cracks or anything like that in the veneer and the wood, we can just go ahead and start painting on top of it. And to protect it, you'll want to make sure that you're using a top coat or you're using like a clear wax. Now this brand of paint is called Fusion Mineral Paint. They actually make their own top coat. I don't believe that I own that top coat, so I probably won't put any top coat. You don't have to use a top coat because this actually has um, a sealer inside of it, which means it will seal on its own. But if it's something like a tabletop, uh, something that's gonna get a lot of traffic, a lot of use, I would definitely say add one, uh, maybe two coats of top coat. Now this paint actually has a little bit more sheen to it than some of the other paints. So chalk paint tends to be very flat. And when you put wax over it, that's when you tend to get the sheen, a little bit of sheen that you're looking for. So this is what we have so far with just one piece, one side done, and this has only been about 10 minutes. So it doesn't take long to paint furniture once you get all the prep done. Now this is where things can get messy when you apply too much paint to your paintbrush and you're going around curves. So just use paint sparingly, take your time, look around each of the edges to make sure that you don't miss anything. Now usually when I'm painting furniture, I'll go in probably to this part, but I won't paint the entire inside, of course. But when the drawer opens, you want to make sure, or when it's closed, you want to make sure that no part of the wood is peeking out. There's no rules to painting furniture when it comes to what to do to the furniture. Although I do believe that if you have a piece of furniture that is Definitely an antique. If it's 100 years older or more, I don't think that you should be painting that. Put the paintbrush down and walk away. But if you have a piece that you found at the thrift store, you know it's vintage, but it's not antique. It's old, but it's not valuable. And you wanna paint it, have at it, sister. And when you have areas like this that have a lot of detail, put some paint on your paintbrush and smush that paint into those crevices. That's how you're gonna get in there. You're not gonna to have to use a small paintbrush. And in here I can try to smooth out any clumps of paint. So people ask me all the time, do you have to paint the back of furniture? And this is what I tell them. If you are painting it to sell, definitely paint the back. You want this piece to look finished. And when they go to load it up in their car, the last thing you want is for them to turn it around and see this nasty old back. And I think by the time we're done the door, we should be able to go back to the wood filler, sand that down and finish these areas. And if we get a nice smooth finish, and we do, look at that. All right, so let's see if this is a good coverage. Yep, this looks pretty good. You don't see any of the nail holes. Oh, and did I mention that I love this color? <gasps> So 
So when you're painting, try to do long strokes and try to overlap the strokes and just have them be one long stroke. So I'm quickly losing sun because there's no more daylight savings time. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of clean this up a little bit because there's some stuff here where the, yeah, where the old hardware was. And now it's just ready for paint. Bye bye, pretty wood. So we're gonna paint this, we're gonna let this dry. And then tomorrow morning when we've got more sunlight, we're gonna do a coat on the inside. I've already done a little bit of the interior painting here, but you can see the difference between this light gray and this color that we did in the Homestead Blue. This was actually a pretty thick paint. This one seems like it's gonna need a little bit more coats. So while the paint is drying on the inside of the china cabinet, we're gonna go ahead and spray down the two shelves that come with the china cabinet. Ooh, this, this is going on really nice. You might be wondering if you have to paint inside of drawers. You don't have to, but I personally think it looks nicer if you either add paint, scrapbook paper, or do something else to make the drawers look good, or if you want to keep them natural, you can use your sander, sand them out, add a coat of clear top coat, something to protect them, and just sanding them down gives them a fresh new look. We are almost done. We have to take the trim, put the trim back in, and put the glass back in without breaking it. See what happens when you DIY? Oh my God, I just cracked the entire piece of glass. Oh, no! Let's take it off. Shoot. I am just messing stuff up all over the place. All right, okay, we got that one in. Oh, I was like, please, just give me this. Just give me the shelves, please. <laughs> and we can go ahead and Put this drawer in, looks like it's done. The knobs that I'm using here can go right into the existing holes. Now, if I wanted to use a different knob, I could drill new holes, or I could create knobs in different locations. Just use your wood filler to fill in any holes that are visible after you place your hardware. Okay, so we are done with this china cabinet makeover, and despite the mishap that we had with the broken glass, I think this still turned out pretty good the knobs really set it off the color is fantastic and we got rid of that nasty little toilet emblem on the front <laughs> and also remember we sanded the top and now it looks fresh it looks clean and once we get the door fixed it's going to be all together but anyway this was a fun project if you enjoyed this be sure to give it a thumbs up and go back to ariat.com remember they're my sponsor and because of them they are making it possible for me to bring this to you and also all the clothing that you see me wear in this video these are my favorite things you can find a link down below to purchase them and also they're having a huge up to 25 percent off sale right now so go back there click down below to use my link and buy yourself some of this gear because I really love it. <laughs> All right, guys, I will see you next video and be sure to find me at thriftdiving.com and have a wonderful Thanksgiving.